arrived at your fishing headquarters on ESPN 106.3 FM. Fishing Headquarters is presented by Costa Sunglasses and Tuppence Marine and Tackle. It's time for fishing reports from around the state of Florida and discussions on everything going on in the world of fishing. It's Fishing Headquarters on ESPN 760 and now ESPN 106.3 FM. Here's your host, Pete Schultz. Headquarters. Live right here at ESPN Radio. My brother's just kind of cleaning off a little uh, preventive uh, sickness right here. You know, <laughs> Eden was here before us, and he was asking if either one of us had been sick. So we don't take any chances. <laughs> we got to rub everything down with alcohol here. Yeah, it's the time of year, Tommy, when they uh, come in the shop and they all want to shake your hand, yeah, right? At, right after they cough into it. <laughs> oh, hey, how you been? I haven't seen you since last year. Great, but you know what? Ease up on the handshaking, man. <laughs> Get you a little. How about this win? Holy, ma- Pete! I was coming up the walkway here, and I thought it was blowing me backwards. It, it was blowing you backwards. It was. It, was, God, you it, felt, like you like, were... it felt like it was thirty. Yeah, I thought you were on the bow of the Titanic. Holy macro, man! I could have probably <laughs> just hung there. <laughs> Try to fall on my face; it'd hold me up. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. This is not my kind of weather. No, but the Buccaneer Cup, the, oh. one of the one of the. Uh, only tournaments going on right now. <laughs> they caught the crap out of fish That's yesterday. Yeah, they caught 175 sailfish, 22 boats in the tournament. 18 of the 22 were f- caught fish yesterday, mm-hmm. and they caught 175 fish. The other four didn't make They're, it out the inlet. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I didn't really, you know, hear all the results. But if you think about it. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a website uh, 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 on Facebook. Go to mm-hmm. Fly, The Fly 100. The, the Fly, Fly 100. 100. Okay. He has on there, he posted videos all day yesterday. Right. You know those classic videos, Tommy, where you, you look in a distance and, oh, there's a boat right there. And then all of a sudden, Disappears. the wave goes down and the boat goes down and you go like, there's the tower of the boat. That's all you see. And then all of a sudden, he comes back up. Right. That's the kind the of roughness it was. It was out on the mountain. So, so they were saying yesterday, 11 to 13. Uh, nine but to eleven with some thirteen. With some thirteens. Right. Today they're saying seven to nine with some eleven footers. Okay, you know we all know and love Noah and all these other weather people, but sometimes they're a little off. Well, Fly One Hundred, the Fly One Hundred. If you go to his Facebook page right now, he's got a live video this morning going out of Palm Beach Inlet in a sixty-six foot Viking. Okay, with a sea keeper on it, with, I mean, the most, the best top top technology you can do. He's going out the inlet, and it's a 66-footer, and it's crashing up on the crown, all the way up onto the flybridge, and the windshield wipers are on. You know, they're in a closed flybridge. And that's in the inlet. This is in the inlet. They haven't made it out the inlet yet. What do you think it's like offshore? No, I'll tell you what it's like. Hold on. It's like, not for me. (laughs) That's what it's like. (laughs) It's like. I'm glad I it's don't It's like have Pete to ain't it. going today. No, no. <laughs> but the weatherman says it's calmer today. Well. But they're saying it's rougher today because the wind's due out of the east. Straight east. Yeah. So once they get out there and they get turned yeah, and they get to the be, spot they're going to okay. go and they get their boats all set up, you know. They, Those boats are made for fishing in this kind of stuff. It's bearable, but yeah. there's a 35-foot, a 39-foot, a couple 41-foot boats Wouldn't in this tournament. That. But most of the boats are 50 to 92 there's a 90 foot venture and there's a 90 a 92 foot venture and a i mean a 92 foot viking, viking. Yeah. a 90 foot american custom yacht wow can you imagine that's the boat i want to be on that's the only boat i want to be on <laughs> especially in this stuff but needless to say they're catching fish bad weather brings a north bite. wind northeast wind yesterday for sale a great sailfish bite exactly and if you're a sail fisherman you're living for this day. Not me, well, but a lot of people are. <laughs> so in the tournament, I was, you know, we were following them yesterday. They had a couple doubles, and they were a little slow getting started in the morning. They caught 25 in the first hour, and then they started picking up, and they were really starting to catch. They were up Dialing to 50, in on the fish where 60, they're at. Yeah. Yep. Um, but the interesting part was, you know, a lot of the, this tournament is a live bait tournament slash dead bait tournament. So you get more points for a dead fish caught on sure. dead bait trolling. Versus the guys who are live baiting. Right. Uh, the top boat had 14, and he was live baiting. So he caught 14 fish, 100, 100 points, points of per fish. fish. Right. So, um, but 
what's interesting to me is there weren't any meat fish entered in the tournament. I looked really? at the scoreboard this morning, and there were no kings, no cobia, no wahoo, no dolphin, hmm. nothing entered. So, you know, sailfish, when they're coming down sea like this and they're traveling – and they're chasing bait. You would think that there would be other fish in there. Dolphin. Yeah. Everybody's Wahoo, wondering, you know, dolphin, it's rough. There's got to be dolphin. Something. If you're in that area, that 100 to 200 foot area where those sails are coming through, which today I would guess they're probably in the 150, 140 depth. That would be my guess. Right. You would still think that you'd hear about some guys catching dolphin or maybe there just wasn't one big enough to enter. I'm not sure. Or maybe they don't really want a dolphin. Maybe people maybe. went, then when they got, you know, they hook up when oh it's a dolphin they break it off because it's nah. rough out there I don't uh, nah, they want to eat know. they want to eat a nice dolphin I you know, know they do so know. the you know the tournament's going on again go to on facebook go to the fly 100 uh fly navarro uh is a good friend of mine and he was at the west palm beach fishing club wednesday night right and uh talking about tactics how how to help you uh, where to start, what to do uh, during wintertime sail fishing. And and uh, there was a full house. I counted at least 120 people there. And um, there was a few hecklers in the front row. Um, Fly has a following. I don't oh, yeah. know if you know yeah. that. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> but uh, they were giving him a hard time. But, um, you know, some great tips that he was giving. And it was some, uh, you know, when you get that many people that are interested in, on a Wednesday night to show up to a, fishing club meeting um i'm telling you it was a packed house i mean right. the standing people were standing room. everywhere there were you know every chair was full there were no place putting more chairs and uh they were all there to find out you know what what's the advantage what and, little what little thing can i get from this and and one of the things that he talked about was if you're fishing tomorrow all right you need to start last monday networking as to what's Where? going on with the weather what's going like right now this tournament you know, everybody's listening to what's going on. You can follow it live. You can follow it on your phone, your Facebook. They have all this live scoring stuff now. Everybody can follow everything. Sure. You need to be following it. Where were they? What were they doing? What, what, where was the what last three, bite? Yeah, what, where was the wind out of? What, uh, you know, where was the best bite? And were they using live bait? Were they using dead bait? And then when you get off the, when the tournament's over, you need to call all your buddies and go, hey, did you fish? What did, yeah, where, yeah, where, where were was you the at? best bite? How far were you? Yeah. It was all about networking and being ready and capitalizing when you got into the fish. Sure. And with today, with the wind coming straight out of that east, Pete, you know, it's going to push those fish in a little I'm shallower. I'm seasick thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to push them in a little bit shallower. Um, so then you go, okay, well, we fished here yesterday, but we probably should start a little bit inside of that because, you know, you got a good shot of those fish coming in. And, you know, you're just going to go from – Whoever you know, whoever fished yesterday, hey guys, let's let's try inshore a little bit just till we get started and see what happens for the first half hour, and we can always move. Yeah, and and the the nice thing about the wind yesterday being out of the northeast, east northeast, was that it cleared up. The water on the beach cleared up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was calm a couple of days this week, calmer. It wasn't really right. calm, but it was calmer. And everyone's talking about how clean the water is from. Uh, Sebastian Inlet South. I mean, everybody's talking about how the water's cleaned up. There's not any fresh water being let out anywhere. The, you know, it's it's not brown. It's not it's not that ugly coffee color. Sure. Even at the pier, it's silty and sandy, but, but it's clear. It's, still, right. it's that greener color. And so, uh, you know, it's probably too rough today to fish off of the pier for the species that the guys like to fish for this year. And we'll get into that in the second part of the show. But, um. The weather offshore, the you know, everyone's talking about how nice and clean the water is. So when it calms down, which maybe tomorrow it's going to come down a little bit, it didn't come down today. They're saying small craft advisories through tomorrow afternoon. Right. Um, but I would say that, you know, Monday looks fishable maybe for some of these guys. Out of pocket. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you're not going to get out of Jupiter. Out Jupiter. No, 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 no. And and then we have another front coming through. It's supposed to rain all day, and another front coming through, and then it's going to blow again. What's sure. the, what is it calling for on Tuesday and Wednesday? Well, Tuesday and Wednesday, it's still the um, flip it over, flip it over on the other side. Oh, there you go. You. Look at you, one yeah. cheater. Um, it, it's still going to blow. You know, north wind still going to be blowing twenty to twenty five, but the seas are coming down according to this to a six to eight. Yeah, but Monday it says less than that. 
Right. And then Monday, and then Tuesday, Monday's Monday's and Wednesday, down. Tuesday, Wednesday picks back up. Yeah, because you got another front coming yeah. through. Yeah, I mean Wednesday you're gonna have you're gonna have 15 to 20s with gusts of 30. Yeah, and I'm telling you what, you walk up this walkway over here, it's gusting 35 <laughs> to 40. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you get a couple. You like you said, you're gonna get a day or two where you might be able to jump in for this other front, get out there, catch some fish. Um, this east wind's gonna help, hopefully push dolphin into. Um, gonna kind of reset the bottom. Too, so all the guys at the bottom fishing, you know, it's going to, like you said, it's going to push in some clean water and, and fan things out. So it, it should be good the next couple of days, and then we're going to have to hold on for a couple of days. This is that time of year when you um, you get your stuff ready, you know, you, you check fix everything out. all the out, problems that change, we're going to fix. Yeah, change your oil in your boat, get, get all your stuff, you know, ready. Because when it does break, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that are anticipating the spring. They're waiting for the spring. Sure. But don't pass up what the what the winter time Absolutely. has to offer. If you're waiting for the spring and that dolphin run and you're getting your boat ready and some boats I, I'm I'm really I'm not that surprised, but I'm surprised that some of the guys coming in the last two weeks are saying, you know, I haven't been in my boat in six months, but now hunting season's over, I'm gonna start fishing again. Sure. The reason for that was the hurricane. You know, since the hurricane, not a lot of guys have gotten back in their boats. You know, they their boat was okay, everything's fine, they gotta do all kinds of stuff to do, hunting season kicked in. And now they're, you know, now, now it's over. So they're boat ready. Yeah, so they're getting ready. But they're getting ready for the Bahama trips when the weather breaks. Yep. They're getting ready for the dolphin bite when the dolphin, you know, mm-hmm. starts. So um, it's that time of year when you need to be ready when the weather breaks. And uh, yeah, because it looks like it's going to break this it's week. It's going to be rewarding if you can get out there. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Listen, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about, I, mean, I got a lot of things to talk about today, but we'd love to hear from you. 888 888- Seven six zero three seven seven six. Go to the Fly One Hundred on Facebook. Check out the video going out Palm Beach Inlet this morning, and then give us a call. Let let me know what you think. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fishing Headquarters on ESPN One Hundred Six Three FM. Now back to Fishing Headquarters, presented by Costa Sunglasses and Tuppence Marine and Tackle on ESPN 106.3 FM. Here's Pete Schultz. And welcome back to Fishing Headquarters live right here on ESPN. 106.3. Hey, my name is Pete Schultz. I'm in the studio this morning with my brother Tommy, and uh, we're talking about rough, rough <laughs> weather today. And I'll tell you what, I got a quick story to tell you. You know, Tommy, we talk about how Jupiter Inlet can be, you know, hard to get in and out of when the weather is like it is today. Um, Jupiter Inlet and you get down to Boynton Inlet. Those are two really, really small inlets, and they're non-navigable. So uh, the Coast Guard doesn't advise you to go through them. Well, for obvious reasons, you know, the bar on the outside of Jupiter Inlet can be, get, you know, can get really, really hairy. Sure. And even if you're in a big boat, it's not getting out. It's not getting out because of the waves. It's getting out over the bar without hitting the bottom. Because right. sometimes when the waves get so big, it draws all the water out, and you bottom out on the bar. Sure. Because it's shallow. So <clears throat> Palm Beach Inlet is pretty much an inlet that you can get out of with any size boat, um, even when it's rough like this. But as you saw in the video this morning going out of the inlet, the Fly 100 has a video on there. Um, it can still be pretty big. And that was in the inlet. That wasn't, yeah. it wasn't, even, you know, when we were seeing a couple there that hit the bridge, um, he wasn't out the inlet yet. No. He was still back inside the inlet. No. So I was talking last night, and and uh, my son JP and his girlfriend Colleen had a housewarming uh, you know, party last night, and her father was there, Pat, and we've gotten to know Pat over the years. He, he, uh, he lives in Ohio, but he fishes on Lake Erie, and Lake Erie is one of the um, shallowest of the of the Great Lakes. Right. So shallowest Lake Erie runs at its deepest point, probably eighty to ninety feet deep. Mm-hmm. You know that's you know fifteen miles offshore. You know whatever. Right. But it's one of those in it's one of those lakes. It's a Great Lake that Superior. Uh, you know Lake Michigan. Those are all really really big lakes. Mm-hmm. But the shallower lakes like Erie. 
they can you can go out for the day, you can run offshore and be out there ten miles offshore and a storm come up. And because, you know, here we have current, we have the Gulf Stream that knocks the waves down. When it gets rough in Lake Erie, they can be out there in a 25 to 30 foot boat with two sea anchors out and drifting along and everything just nice. And the wind comes up and a, a northeast storm and it can be from one foot to two foot. And all of a sudden it can be eight to 10 foot. In Lake Erie. Sure. And he was telling me some of the stories about it. Go out there and it'd take them, you know, 30 minutes to get offshore in the morning out where the fishing grounds were and they're catching fish and everything's really good and it'd take them three and a half hours to get back because the seas got so Change rough and they were rough. so close together. You know, it's the wind it's there. constant is, beat. Oh, yeah. And, and it was uh, it, it pretty interesting that, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's not just yeah, here. Right. But we're pretty lucky because we have the Gulf Stream. Exactly. The Gulf Stream comes the closest uh, to the continental United States right here off between Boynton and Jupiter Inlet. It's the closest it can possibly be. And right. sometimes it's right. not a, not far outside the green can of the Palm Beach Inlet. Sure. And uh, in the summertime, it can be really, really close. So it, the, be, the Gulf Stream with the current going north tends to knock the seas down. If you get the wind and the Gulf Stream in the same direction, it's usually not that big. Right. Uh, this time of year, whew, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be out there today. I don't care how strong the Gulf Stream is. Yeah. 888-760-3776. You have a comment, a question, hey, give us a shout. We're talking about rough conditions today for sure. Whew. Man, so Tommy, um, Kingfish, they caught some Kingfish this week. Right. Let's preview a little bit about what happened this week and what possibly could happen next week if you get a chance to get out. The bycatch, we were talking about earlier, maybe some dolphin, mm-hmm. but the bycatch this week was some really nice kingfish. Those kingfish moved in because the front came down and pushed, wind came out of the north. Back to us again. Yeah. Mike was catching some kingfish and some right. nice kingfish. And, and, you know, I mean, like you said, that's the bycatch. This time of the year, the kingfish are here. Uh, you know, it depends on the weather. They go back and forth. But, um, you know, but you also get, you know, hopefully with this east wind, it'll push some more dolphin in too. Um, which is also a, a great bycatch if you're out there sail fishing, you know, to catch a nice dolphin. So, and reset the ocean, like you said, exactly. for bottom. Yep, clean every, you know, switch. I mean, cobia. You got a shot at cobia this time of the year on the bottom when you're bottom fishing too. It happens all the time. You talk to those guys, Black Dog and um, Mystic Rose, and you know, and all the other guys out there, Samana that that um, you know that. Oh yeah, we had we had you know four cobias today. Well, one of them was legal, but the other ones weren't. But we also had a bunch of snapper. And I heard Bill talking about how, you know, we had a lot of small yellowtails and a lot of small fish that we normally don't have as far as bottom fish that have moved in um, from the hurricane, really. And they just kind of, they're still kind of staying here, which, you know, I don't know, this weather might push them back. You know, when you get that strong north wind, it might push them back back to the Keys again. But uh, the fishing's just been, like you said, if you can get out there, it's definitely, um, you, you can get catch food, catch dinner, and and get a shot at catching and releasing a few sailfish too. What we tend to hear about on days when the water, you know, if we get two, three days, four days in a row where it's rough and north swell and it's coming down the beach, you know, today it's east. That's only because it's going to switch back around when this next front comes through. But right. um, when we get these fronts that come down, we I think we talked about it last week or the week before. One of the things that happens is the um, you get these species of fish out on the reef that you normally don't catch. So we've heard of, this week, we heard of flounder being caught. Right. We've heard of redfish, of course, being caught out on the reef. Um, there was a boat out of Stewart that caught croakers, big, giant croakers on the bottom out of Stewart Inlet. Really? One of the drift boats. Wow. So, you know, there's no there's no walls. We talk about it all the time. There's no walls. There's no fences. There's no fences out there when you're fishing. And... uh it's it's crazy, but we did hear quite a few bluefish mackerel, that inshore bite, and we'll talk about that when we come back from this next break, but that inshore bite was really good this week, and uh, I think you have a lot of, of uh, we have a lot more to come in the, in the next two weeks. You know, winter is just, it's been blowing, but it's kicked in full, full blown now, sure. so you're going to start hearing about more stuff on the beach, and we'll talk about that, uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back from this next commercial, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about inshore and I want to tell you about a, a new 
promotion that we have. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fishing Headquarters on ESPN 106.3 FM. Now back to Fishing Headquarters, presented by Costa Sunglasses and Tuppins Marine and Tackle on ESPN 106.3 FM. Here's Pete Schultz. I got my toes in the water, toes in the sand. Not a worry in the world of cold beer in my hand. Life is good today. Life is good today. Yeah, welcome back to Fishing Headquarters Live right here on SPN 106.3. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in this Saturday morning, a windy Saturday morning. You've got a cold beer in your hand today. It's all over the deck. We're right it's down here. sloshing out. Downtown West Palm Beach. A little uh, race going on down here. You probably know all about it. But, hey, I want to talk about a promotion that we have going on. Check this out, okay? Tuppins and Fishing Headquarters. Tuppence is in Lake Worth, Fishing Headquarters in Jupiter. We have this really cool promotion that I think would be something that you might all be interested in. So I know this is uh, far out there, but we're only three weeks away from Valentine's Day. I thought you were going to say Christmas again. Three weeks away from Valentine's Day. Just around the corner. So you know the new Pen Passion? You know the pink rod and reel designed specifically for women? Exactly. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. Fishing Headquarters in Jupiter and Tuppence in Lake Worth, we're both going to give one away to uh, someone who comes into either store. You have to go into, if you want to win one from Tuppence, you have to go into Tuppence, put your name in their fishbowl. Right. And we're going, at uh, after Saturday's show on the 10th, mm-hmm. we're going to draw out a winner. Right. Of for two rods and reels, one from Tuppence in Lake Worth, okay, but you and one from Fishing Headquarters in Jupiter. You're going to win a rod and reel combo. This is a hundred fifty dollar value for your better it's a, half. It's a pink rod and reel. You know, it's not too early to start thinking about it. I posted something yesterday on Facebook, and guys, you know what I'm talking about, okay? You wait till the last minute, you run out and get some flowers and some candy, box of stale candy, dude. Check this out. All right, go to our website, fishingheadquarters.net. Right. And right there on the homepage, you'll see the passion reel. It's right there. You can't miss it. It's really a battle pen battle reel with a little bit of pink trim on it sure. and a really nice combo. You saw the so combo. So it's not a gaudy pink. It just no. shows that that's this is a, not a man's rod. This is the best pink accented rod and reel that we've seen in the last 10 years for women. And it's designed for women. It comes in four sizes. A 2,000, a 3, a 4, and a 5,000 size, which you could use offshore sure. for, you know, snapper fishing and things like that. Right. But And maybe even catching dolphin. We're both going to give away Steve at Tuppins, Steve Sprague, one of the owners at Tuppins, and I spoke. They're going to give one away at Tuppins right. in, in Lake Worth, and we're going to give one away at Fishing Headquarters. Now, here's the deal. On the counter, it doesn't say win a free passion. It doesn't There's say just a fish bowl sitting on the counter. And you have to go in there knowing that you heard it on the radio here show. on the radio show on ESPN, uh, and that you're now you're going to go in. You have to go into them or us. Sign up for it. We're going to draw a name out of the hat on February 10th, and you're going to win a rod and reel passion pen passion rod and reel. It's a That's four thousand pretty combo. cool, pretty cool deal, right? Yeah. So sign up. Go to uh, like I said, go to them. Go to us. You can you can you have a chance of winning a combo. And listen, buy one now. You're done. You don't sure. have to worry about it. Right. Right? Yeah, you're not sure if you're going to win. So let's talk about the inshore fishing, Tommy. Um, Pompano fishing has been really good. You know, the guys in Hope Sound on Tuesday and Wednesday, it was probably the best Pompano bite we've had yet this, this season. Right. The fish are here now. The fish that were in Sebastian and north of Sebastian, they're all here. These bigger schools of Pompano are here. Um. I talked to some of the guys out of Fort Pierce. They said that they can, when they can get out the outside the inlet and run the beach, right? They're finding schools of them and they're jigging them up. You know, perfect. Doc's goofy jig, uh, Gulf Streams high jinks, mm-hmm. um, any pompano jig that you're used to using, you're going to catch pompano now. You just have to get that day when the water, you know, is not too rough, it's not too silty, and we're the water's cleared up. Right. Pompano fishing is what is happening on the beach right now. Sure. 
Not today. No, not today. Probably Tuesday. Maybe Monday. Maybe. Maybe yeah. Monday. So, yeah, that's one of the things you can do. You can also use fish bites. Uh, we talked about fish bites last week, and we've been talking about it regularly this time of year because it's one of those deals that you can put on your hook and cast it out, and it's not going to cast not off. fly off. Right. Most guys still put something else on. Yeah, a lot of them will put a, a sand flea, uh, you know, on top of that, or even, or even a you know, piece of clam. Um, you know, a lot of guys use clams, and sometimes when those fish get turned on to clams, they don't want to eat the sand flea. But they'll pretty much eat that fish bite just about any time because of the different flavors that they make in, uh, you know, in the in the um, fish bites. They'll make a clam. They'll make a shrimp. They'll make a sand flea. Now, I personally haven't chewed on one to taste them. But, you know, if you guys want to try it, I mean, go for it. Let me know how they taste. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just uh, like chewing gum that doesn't go away. <laughs> so um, that's uh, Jack. He's down here at the race. He's right down there. Oh, is he? Yeah, with the whole family. So, hey, um, so yeah. So the, not only do you have that. So the inside fishing, I mean, what can you do today? Today, you know what you can do if you want to really go fishing. Try to find a place out of the wind. Sure. Uh, inside Lake Worth Lagoon. Uh, Loxatchee River, um, the intercoastal waterway, fish the side that the wind isn't blowing. Sure. You know, the wind's the coming out to the east side. You want to fish on that side. Stay out of the wind. Use the shoreline to your advantage. Sure. Uh, find the find, cast underneath docks, live shrimp, uh, a, 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 a Hank Brown's uh, a hookup with a, with with a live, live shrimp. shrimp on is probably one of the best things you can use. And I did that on Tuesday, Pete. Oh, yeah, yeah that's I right. Went, went, how did you I, do I went up the intercoastal, kind of like you're saying. The wind was honking, too. Um, so, you know, I I was going up there just, you know, messing around to see what's been up there. And I'm going to caught some jacks and, uh, you know, of course, caught a lot of catfish. And not catfish, sail cats. And usually that, when you're catching a bunch of sail cats, the water's pretty dirty and yeah, milky yeah. and sandy, and that's kind of what it was up like up there. No ladyfish, so I didn't catch any ladyfish. Cut, you know, like I said, had plenty of jacks and and plenty. Of, I would throw a jig out with a shrimp on it, uh, and just drift that. And while I was doing that, I was working a dock. Rodney was holding jig. them. Yep, Rodney was hooking those catfish for me, so I didn't have to, <laughs> but I had to unhook them. Um, but you know, while I, while I was doing that, I was drifting with a Cody, or actually, I was using a dock scoofy jig first, and then got. You know, you know me and my Cody Jig. They don't make like, Cody's I, anymore. Uh, well, I still have a big Don't talk bunch about Cody's. Those, they don't man. make them anymore. They're still. I'll yes, tell you what. Yes, DOA. They do because DOA makes one that's pretty darn close to the Cody It jig. is. And it's really tough, too. Yeah. So, so they do still make them, uh, just in a different name brand. So let me, let me say something, okay? All right, go ahead. I know that, you know, you're fishing one on the bottom and then you're jigging, right? Right. Um, the bycatch in the last week or so has been black drum, redfish, croakers. Obviously, they're on the bottom. Sheep's head, guys are catching sheep's head. Some of those guys that are snook fishing at night are catching some really nice mangrove snappers and stuff under the docks. Of course, you always have trout, ladyfish, snook. You got those other bycatch that you can catch. There's sure. been some really nice jacks. Uh, did you catch a lot of jacks? You yeah, probably yeah, caught plenty a lot of jacks. jacks. Yeah, I mean, they were blowing Here's up one on thing. the east side. You'd see them blowing up. Here's one thing that you should try, okay? And if you're listening this morning and, and you uh, are going to think about going on the inside, one of the things that the guys do in Stewart, Fort Pierce, and all the way up through the, the uh, St. Lucie River, the Indian River Lagoon, and especially even up there in the, uh, in the lagoon uh, out of Vero where they catch all the redfish and stuff, right. one of the things that they like to do, and it's something that works, and, and recently I've been actually doing it, is they, they get a float, they get a bobber, they get a, well, one of the, uh, a clacker, like a, for, like DOA makes a clacker, it's a, a float with some beads on each yeah, side. Like it's the on Cajun a little, Thunder. Cajun Thunder's a great one to use yeah. because it's, in the, in the windy conditions like today, it's got a little bit of weight to it so you can actually cast your, you know, shrimp in the direction that you want to cast your shrimp in. Sure. Use a Cajun Thunder and say you're fishing in seven feet of water. Use a Cajun Thunder, which is a, on a piece of wire already. You tie your line to the I, – what I like to do is I like to put about six feet of mono in front of the Cajun Thunder, just like 20-pound because I'm using a spinning rod. I like to have something that I can reach down and grab a hold of to put the fish in the boat. Sure. So use a short piece of mono on the top, like 20-pound, and then below the Cajun Thunder, Pretty use a leader. piece of 30-pound, something a little bit heavier right. in case you catch something nice. But if you put a live shrimp on that Cajun Thunder, mm -hmm. 
You, now you have that bait that's suspended three, four feet off the bottom. You're fishing six to eight feet of water. You put four feet a liter on there. The shrimp's only four foot down. You eliminate a lot of the catfish. You don't right. eliminate all of them. No, they're You're gonna, not going to no. if the water's really, really dirty. But you will li- eliminate, and now you have a bait that's suspended in a different part of the water column. Right. That's one tip that you can use this time of year when it gets windy like this and it gets and you want to fish on the inside. No doubt that jigging a high jinx uh, lure or a Doc's Goofy jig, you're going to have a better chance at catching a pompano. No question about right. that. Right. Because you're covering the whole water column. Absolutely. Always throw a shrimp out there on the bottom like you're doing unless there really is a lot of catfish. But if you want to change from that, man, there's nothing like putting a float out there. It's not as exciting, but if you're bringing people on the boat that haven't fished before, it's a great way to keep yourself not as busy baiting hooks, continuing sure. taking off catfish. Yep, you're right. And and they're and they're not ex- they're not expensive at all. You're talking, you know, four or five bucks for not even four or five bucks or three four bucks for a a float or two floats in a package with yeah. uh you know with the stuff that you need to to uh, to make them stay up there. And trout fishermen use them to pop. And make noise to bring the to attention attract. to the float on sure. a calmer day. Right. You know, so that's one tip that, that works. And a, a lot of guys have been using uh, the floats lately. You know, triple tails, those guys up there fishing in Stewart. I saw some, we had a guy in yesterday that said he was in Rocky Point. Okay. And he was from, uh, I think he said he was from Virginia. He okay. was here visiting, hadn't been in a boat yet. He said, hey, uh, he put some new line on. Mike put new line on his reel. And he said, uh, hey, I want to show you this fish I caught. Man, look at this fish I caught. I've been catching all these fish. He was off Rocky Point up in Stewart, and he's fishing off of a dock. Okay. Okay. He had about an eight-pound triple tail. Come on. In a pic- He had a picture of it, yeah. He said, yeah, I caught this triple tail right off the dock. This thing, is- man, it tasted so good. I ate this. He, had a, um, he also had some really big croakers. He caught a trout. He was like, I don't need a boat. I come down here. I goes, I just stand on this dock and cast out there, and I caught all these fish. So it's that time of the year when it happens. You get sure. A, the weather brings all Pushes these new all species those fish down in. here. Yep. Exactly. All right, so we're going to go to break. But before we go to break, I want to remind everyone, here's the deal. Tuppins in Lake Worth, Fishing Headquarters in Jupiter, we're both giving away a Passion 4000 rod and reel combo by Penn. Right. Uh, if you want to see it, Go to our websites, Fishing Headquarters Jupiter, Tuppence.com, uh, Fishing Headquarters.net in Jupiter, and Tuppence.com, and check out the Passion Rod and Reel combos. The, we don't have the combo on our website, but we have the reel on our website. All right. We're giving it away, but you have to go into the store and put your name in the hat. There's a bucket on the counter. No, no name, name on, on it. it. Just yep. fill it out, and hopefully you're the winner. Tell the guys at Tuppence that you heard about it right here on ESPN 106.3. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Fishing Headquarters on ESPN 106.3 FM. Now back to Fishing Headquarters, presented by Costa Sunglasses and Tuppence Marine and Tackle on ESPN 106.3 FM. Here's Pete Schultz. Welcome back to Fishing Headquarters Live. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. All right. We are uh, bringing out the home stretch here, Tommy. Yeah. I got. I, I want to say. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's just go right to bass fishing because I know you had a chance to go bass fishing. And uh, here's the deal, okay? You call me up and you say, "Oh, by the way, I'm not coming in tomorrow. I'm going bass fishing." What? And what better day to do it than yesterday? I was blowing like a hurricane. I didn't well, need to be are there. Are you out of your mind? I didn't need to be there. That's so, why I have you. So tell me, I mean, but did you just go beer drinking? Because there couldn't have been any bass. No, actually, you know, of course. Did you go fishing with Eddie? No, I did not go with Eddie. I went to the south end of the Eddie, lake. did you hear that? Okay. Eddie. Well, I went to the south Tommy, end of Tommy the lake. Tommy didn't go fishing okay. with you. Eddie fishes the north end of the lake. You fished on the south? I fished in the south end of the lake on, out of Roland Martins. But you know the wind was out of the east northeast, okay, so it was blowing just, right just, at just like. So you were we in the wrong about going side. And fishing the intercoastal, you can go to the east side, you go to the west side, depending <clears> on. <throat> well, same thing out there. There's so many little places you can duck. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever you, been out to the lake, 
But if you go out there, there's a lot of places to hide to, to get out of that wind. There's a rim canal. There, I tell you what, we ran. Now the boat we were in, we were doing 65. And now I can understand. Whoa, 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 65 whoa, whoa, whoa. miles an hour. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What direction were you headed when you were on 65? It wasn't into the northeast. Well, we were in the rim canal, so we didn't have to. We, we oh, weren't out. Oh, in the, okay. We weren't out in the chop. Oh, okay. But I can All tell right. you, when there's a break in the rim canal and the wind is blowing in, and yeah. you hit that chop, even though it's a small chop, you know, like in our boat, we'd have went Psh! nothing. Right. But you hit it in at 65 in one of those bass boats. They're so low to the water. There's I can see why these guys um, get thrown out of the boat and accidents happen. You don't need to go, you know, 80 miles an hour, but I can tell you. You don't need to go 65 miles an hour. No, we don't. And and, and when we hit that, you know, of course, I pulled my back, you know, on last Tuesday. And (laughs) and so when we were going across that thing, man, and it's tweaked, that little boat's tweaking. Now, my back was, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm 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 going to completely break What kind of boat were you in? We're in a Ranger, which is, you know, 90% of those boats out at the lake. Um, and there was a tournament going on, of course. So we got out. Luckily, we got out, you know, before uh, before all the bass boats got turned loose. So we got to our spot, and we were catching them way before those guys. And then all the pros pretty much came where we were at. Not all of them, but there was a good 20 boats right where we were fishing in a lot of those lily pads. And, and um, you know, we were we were actually lure fishing. And, and uh, later on, we ran in and got a couple – dozen shiners and we used like three of those and went back to lure fishing because they were biting the lures better because of the wind condition you're fishing in the lily pads and you know you got it just like here you got to go and find the places to fish and um that's what we did so the bass fishing was it was okay it wasn't it wasn't the best i've ever been out there but you know so that's it was, so back up you just threw a whole bunch of stuff out there but you didn't give me really any detail so you said what do you do? So my question was going to be, so what do you do when the wind's blowing that hard and you're bass fishing and you're on the wrong side of the lake? You went in the rim canal or, you well, know. Even in, <clears throat> in the lake itself, you know, there's so many um, so many areas you can duck out of the wind. Sure. Um, just, you know, and, and that's kind of what we did. So we got a spot where, you know. So yeah, you were throwing artificial. We were throwing artificial. What, so you were throwing a little rubber worm? No, we were in that kind of wind, more, more of a shad. And let me tell you what, you know, we, we, we make fun of Eddie all the time saying, you know, why do you have 50 pound braid on there? Well, that's pretty much what we were fishing. Fish, 50 pound braid with like a zoom, um, uh, shad or a paddle bait, either one. So a bigger on. so worm. A giant. Oh yeah. Giant. Giant. And it's pretty big. You yeah. Know, size of a, something know, that you could throw, something had some you weight. throw into the wind too. Mm. And, uh, just kind of at the end we, we changed, we switched back and forth to different lures, but. We were throwing the shads, and, you know, you throw right into those lily pads and just kind of bump it off the lily pad, let it sink, and, and just kind of give it a little twitch and work it like you would a Zara Spook, Pete. And let me tell you what, them bastards just come up there and blow them up and, or suck them right in, and, you know, that's kind of what we were doing. Then when it got, we were into where it was too much wind, we went to something with a paddle tail, you know, like we throw a like lot. Like a swim bait. Correct. And that paddle tail, he's just said, throw it out there and just rip it across the surface. Just reel it fast. Uh, them bass are going to come blow it up. You know, they're going to come through those lily pads. And that's pretty exactly what happened. You know, uh, we were doing it that way toward, you know, toward the middle part of the trip. And, um, we caught, I don't know, maybe 20 bass. Um, Any big ones? Biggest one was probably about four, four and a half pounds. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, looking around, uh, with all the pros that were out there. They weren't catching a whole lot either, you know. Well, we yeah. were kind of the you conditions know, weren't the, great. That's no, for sure. No, no, and and that's what happens when you get a, a weather or something like that that you know that kicks up. So you got to try to find those spots, and, and obviously going with someone who's been out there fishing, um, they can put you on a spot. Go with a guide because Lake Okeechobee, if you don't know where you're going, oh no, yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. tough. Yeah, it's not that's not a good sign either. I was talking about Lake Erie. Lake Okeechobee can be that way. Where Absolutely. Get, you'd you know, be shocked at how rough that lake can Yeah, get. it gets six foot yeah. without a problem. All right, so here's the deal, okay? Tuppins in Lake Worth, fishing headquarters in Jupiter. We're giving away a pen rod and reel combo, a passion 4,000 rod and reel combo uh, for Valentine's Day, something that you can give your sweetheart for Valentine's Day. Right. Uh, or keep it yourself, whatever you want to do. But here's the deal. If you want to win uh, – the rod and reel combo, you have to come into fishing headquarters and put your name and phone number in the hat. You have to go into Tuppence and Lake Worth and put your name and phone number in the hat if you yep. want to win. That's the only way. 
There's just a, a bucket on the counter. You got to go in and put your name on it. No, tell them that you heard about you. it here on Fishing Headquarters Live, and uh, you'll have a better chance at at, uh, at winning. You'll have the only chance you can get at winning. Sure. Um, we have the passion on our website, fishingheadquarters.net. If you go there to our homepage, you'll see the passion. Penn has done an outstanding job with making a rod and reel design specifically for women. Right. And that's the right gear ratio. It's the right rod. It's the right accents. It's not too overwhelming. It does not too much pink on it. Um, we'd love to see some of your pictures. I know that sure. yesterday I posted about the uh, the uh, the passion combo, and uh, I had some comments and women showing me their picture. They already own the passion rod and reel, nice. and they sent it to us on my Facebook page, Fishing Headquarters Jupiter, and also on our Instagram page, Fishing Headquarters Jupiter. Send us your photos. And uh, hopefully you'll get out and get fishing. And next week we'll be back right here on Fishing Headquarters Live. So 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 Fishing Headquarters Live.